Thank you, Lord, for being here today, Lord God. Hey, welcome to the San Francisco Temple Church live stream. Right now, we want to thank and welcome everyone from all over the world that's watching. Before we get started, I want to read the service times and how to give your tithes and offerings. Prayer services, San Francisco Temple Prayer Line will continue to have daily prayer Monday through Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. There's a special prayer for men every Thursday from 8 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And for the youth every Saturday from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Everyone is welcome to join any of these prayer services. Now, our live streams, you can go to www.sanfranciscotemple.com. Live streaming will take place on the following days and times. Sundays at 10.30 a.m., Sunday morning worship service. On Tuesdays at 7 p.m., Miracle Night Service. On Wednesday at 7 p.m., Evangelistic Night Services. Fridays at 7 p.m., Bible Study Services. If for some reason you do not have access to the Internet, you may listen to these services over the phone at the same service times provided above. To listen to these services, please follow the instructions. Please call 1-712-770-5603. When prompt, please enter the following access code, 409-683-POUND. Make sure you press the pound sign after you enter the access codes. For tithes and offering, amen. You are encouraged to pay your tithes and offering through the online application called Givelify. If you choose, you may pay by mail or come by the church during office hours. Office hours are Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. For instructions on how to use Givelify, please contact the administration or business office at 314-388-3300, extension 1 or 2. The other means of payment you may use are cash applications such as Cash App. That's dollar sign San Francisco Temple. And PayPal is paypal.me forward slash San Fran STL. For those who would like to pay by check or money order, please make sure giving payable to San Francisco Temple and send to the following address. San Francisco Temple, CA, 10191 Halls Ferry Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136. And our additional announcements. Uh, remember, the seventh anniversary for our own Bishop Luther Blackwell will be held on Sunday, May the 16th. We are asking that every member please give a love token of $70 by May the 2nd. If you wish, you may pay installments. Please contact the finance department. Give 
Myself and along with the brethren of the elders are doing a study of the Psalms. And uh, we are giving the believers, the body of Christ, those that are tuning in, a, a good biblical understanding and a breakdown of the Psalms. And on tonight, we're going to be talking about Psalms 52. Psalms 52 of a great breakdown and a good understanding of what God is telling us in Psalms 52 that we can take and we can apply to our life. And I'm going to try to do a, a, a deep study and a breakdown of the scriptures to get a solid understanding of what is God is saying to us. Amen. Giving honor to God who's the head of our life, to our bishop, everyone that's tuning in. May God keep you and bless you and from all the viewers from around the world. With every head bowed as we pray before we go into this word. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time again to speak from that holy word. We pray, oh Father God, that you give us to speak, give the people an ear to hear and a heart to receive and a mind to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, Friday night is a night of Bible studies. It's not we're preaching to you, but we're going to be studying God's word. And so that we can get a good understanding of what God is saying. So as we take a look at Psalms 52, this Psalms is titled to the chief musician. Psalms 52 basically is a synopsis of David when Doag the Edomite went and told Saul and said to him, David has gone to the house of Amalek. 
<clears throat> now, Amalek was the chief priest during that time when David was on the run from Saul. And what happened, or what is the significance of Psalms 52 is that Doag the Edomite went back to King Saul and told him that David went into the house of the Lord. And we're going to see and study what happened. The terrible events that prompt this chapter are recorded in 1 Samuel 21-22. Doag informed Saul regarding his David presence at the tabernacle of God and regarding the help he received from the priest there. In an evil and paranoid response, Saul had Doag kill the priest and others at the tabernacle. And we can see that in 1 Samuel 22, 18, verse 19. Through the condemnation of Doag in this Psalms is strong, we sense it should be stronger in the light of the mass murder he committed. Yet this is David's synopsis upon the incident. A careful examination of the root and end of Doag's evil. So Doag, at the order of King Saul, killed 85 priests. Not only did he kill 85 priests, the Bible also says that he killed the women and the children and the men and the surrounding neighbors. And you can read that more as you dig deep into the Psalms. And before we go into Psalms 52, let's just take a look at what happened, what led King David to write Psalms 52. So this is what we're going to look at in 1 Samuel 21, verses 1 through 6. And David was given the bread. So let's turn to 1 Samuel 21, verses 1 through 6. And the Bible says, David went to the town of Nob to see Amalek the priest. Amalek trembled when he saw him. Why are you alone, he asked. Why is no one with you? The king has sent me on a private matter, David said. He told me not to tell anyone why I am here. I have told my men where to meet me later. Now what is there to eat? Give me five loaves of bread or anything else you have. We don't have any regular bread. The priest replied, but there is the holy bread which you can have if your young man have not slept with any women recently. Don't worry, David replied. I never allow my men to be with women when we are on a campaign. And since they stay clean, even on ordinary trips, how much more on this one? Since there was no other food available, the priest gave him the holy bread, the bread of the presence that was placed before the Lord in the tabernacle. It just been replaced that day with the fresh bread. So here we see David was on a run from King Saul and that they didn't have any food. So David went to the tabernacle to get some food. And here the priest gave David so that he could feed himself along with the people with him the showbread, the bread from the tabernacle. And that bread was actually only intended for the priest. But during this time, God allowed David to take place. And now here, we're going to look at Psalm, 1 Samuel 22, verse 9 through 16. After David received the showbread, study shows us that Doag, the Edom, Edomite, was also present at the tabernacle when this event took place. And we can see that in 1 Samuel 22 verse 9 through 16 that after Doak went to King Saul and said David was at the tabernacle we're going to see the events that led up to it then answered Doak the Edomite which was set over the servants of Saul and said I saw the son of Jesse coming to Nob to Amalek the son of Ebtub and he inquired of the Lord for him and gave him victuals and gave him the sword of Goliath, the Philistine. Then the king sent to call Amalek the priest, the son of Edhub, and all his father's house, the priests that were in Nob, and then came all of them to the king. And he said, Hear now, the son of Ahub, 
And he answered, Here I am, my Lord. And Saul said to him, Why have you conspired against me? Thou and thou son of Jesse, and thou hast given him bread and a sword, and hast inquired of God for him, that he should rise against me to lie in wait at this day. Then Amalek answered the king and said, And who is so faithful among all the servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law? And goeth at at thy bidding and is honorable in thy house. Then I began to inquire of God for him. Be it far from me. Let not the king impute anything unto his servant, nor to all the house of my father. For thy servant knew nothing of all this, less or more. And verse 16, and, kings, and the king said, thou shalt surely die. Amalek thou and all thy father's house. And so... Here we see the evil report that Doag gave to King Saul cost Amalek his life, and not only his life, but the life of other priests in the surrounding neighborhoods. And now we can go into Psalms 52, as we now had set the stage to get a good, solid understanding of, of after the events that took place after what we'd read, and David decided to write a psalms to give us an understanding of, of the evil that was done. And the Bible says in Psalms 52, verses 1 through 4, Why boastest thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. The tongue devised mischief like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou love is evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteousness. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. Why do you boast in evil, O mighty man? David thought of Doak, the Enamite, and the evil report he brought to King Saul. He thought not only of the evil report itself, but also in the boast and the joy Doag took in delivering the message. Boasting. Sometimes boasting is a cover for deep insecurity. That wasn't the case with Doag. He really thought quite highly of himself. The thought conveyed in this Hebrew word is not necessarily that of a person strutting around making extravagant claims to others about his or her abilities. Rather, it is that of a smug self-sufficiency that does not parade itself openly simply because it's so convinced of its superiority. You see, Boad, Doad boasted in the evil that he's done and the evil that, that he did. And today, in society, in the world, we have people glorifying evil, boasting in corruption and that they're doing and we can see that, that Doak took pleasure when he killed the 85 priests. Because if you go back and you read the text, King Saul asked the fellow brethren of Israel to kill the priests. But none of them wanted to go up and touch the priests. Because why? The Bible says Psalms 105 verse 15. He says, touch not my anointing, and do my prophets no harm. You see, beloved, as a believer in Christ and as a child of God, you are the anointed one. You are anointed by God because once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, God places the Holy Ghost down on the inside of you, his spirit, and now you are sanctified through the blood, and so you are anointed so that people on your job that might think they can take advantage of you or people in your communities or people around you, your loved one, your families think that they can just treat you any kind of way, but not so because God say, touch not my anointing. They think they're going to get away with it, but I can guarantee you that the justice and the righteousness and the sovereignty of God that he will bring an end and he will bring everything to judgment whether it be good or evil. And Doak, by killing those 85 priests, 
basically just signed and sealed his death wish. And the Bible says, as in the next couple of verses, it says, and the goodness of God endures continually. David earnestly believed that Doag's way would fail. God's goodness will outlast evil. It is true that Doag was a mighty man. He was a man of war. He was a valiant man. But that was nothing compared to God in his, in his never ending goodness. You see, we can look at what's going on in the world today. Famine, earthquakes, wars, inflations, layoffs, everything that the world has will come to an end. And it seems like you might have, might be one of those individuals that may have lost your job. Or you might be an individual going through a sickness. You might be someone going through a hard test or a hard trial right now. But I want to let you know that the goodness of God endures continually. The reason why it says continually, meaning that there's no end. There's no stop. There's no, okay, he just been good to you this day. No, it's a continuity that every day that you wake up, you can expect the goodness of God to overflow in your life because that's just how good God is. Regardless of what the devil is doing, the devil could be raising hell all in the street, all in the communities, all in the cities, but the, that does not dictate or stops the goodness of God to flow. Just like here in our own city, it seemed like there's lawlessness had just took over the city. And it seemed like there's nowhere God can be found. Just recently, a young lady was traveling in town, volleyball tournament. A young man who shouldn't even been on the streets violated his probation, house arrest, over 45 times on the street, end up passing a red light, end up injuring and paralyzing the young lady where she lost some of her members because you know why? He disobeyed the law. Then there was another incident where there was some youth, some young people, on their way to a party, an individual decided to pass the red light, end up causing a car to flip over, and two of them lost their lives and four of them are with the last I checked, was in critical condition. Because we see so much wickedness and, and so much evil and so much darkness and it seems like evil has prevailed, I'm going to tell you that God's goodness will endure continually. So we can't let what the devil is doing dictate how good God would be. When David wrote the goodness of God, he used the word El to refer to deity instead of the more common Elohim. Some commentators believe the use of El emphasizes the strength and the might of God because we serve a God that's full of strength, that's never weak, and not only that, he's the mighty God. A spiritual aspect. The priests represented the Levites. The priests represented the Levites. And one thing that you can understand about the Levites is that they had one of their jobs to do is to usher in the presence of God to worship. You see, when Doag was beginning to kill the priests and the spiritual, it's just like the devil is trying to kill out your worship. You can't let the devil kill out your worship. One test after the next test, then the next test, and the next test. And it seems like the devil is trying to get you to, to stop worshiping God, to stop praising God, to stop giving God the glory. The devil may seem like he might be attacking you on the left hand and attacking you on the right hand, and it seemed like he won. But you got to continue to give God glory. 
to give God praise, to give him the accolades that's due to him. Because the Bible says that deliverance comes on the praises of wings. Hallelujah. And we're going to continue to bless God regardless of what the devil is doing. The devil could be killing or trying to kill out your worship. But don't let him kill out the very thing that's going to keep you going. That's going to keep you walking and going to keep you in blessed fellowship with God is worship. And now it says, as we go on, it says, your tongue devises destructions. Since this psalm concerns the evil report of Doag, David mentions the destruction that came from what Doag said. And not only that. The Bible says, Jesus said, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when Doag went to King Saul and told him what transpired, already in Doag's heart, he had such hate and bitterness. It was murder was already done because it started in the heart. And so there was an evil heart, evil mind. And the life directing that tongue to work like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. But it was all evident by what Doeg said. And what do the Bible say about the tongue? We can find out in James chapter 3, and this will help us to keep our tongue bridle. James chapter 3, verses 2 to 8. It says, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with every small helm. Whatsoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue, the tongue is a little member, but it boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire can. In other words, the, the tongue is, is, even though the tongue is yet small, the Bible says it can start a whole fire. Just like one little match can just light and just touch something, it could burn a whole building down. And the Bible says, and the tongue is a fire. World of iniquity. In other words, the tongue is full of so much iniquity that, that, that it causes so much things to go on in the world, as you can see. The tongue caused murders. The tongue lies. The tongue gossip. The tongue can be deceiving. The tongue can curse the tongue has caused so many wars and caused so many people to lose their lives and so in the bible says that in the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and set it on fire the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. In other words, the Bible said that the tongue set on fire of hell. In other words, the tongue can cause a lot of hell in people's lives to take place because the tongue is not contained. For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue no man can tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. But you can see here in James chapter 3 that no man can contain the tongue. But that's why on the day of Pentecost, when they was in the upper room, that while they was tarrying and that they was praying, the Bible says there came a mighty sound of a mighty rush of wind. And the Bible also said that they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit and God give utterance. In other words, once God can get a hold of your tongue, then God can get your whole body. 
So that's why you need to receive the gift and the power of the Holy Ghost so that God can take over your tongue and that you begin to speak a heavenly language. And once God got your tongue, he got the whole body and he could turn the body whatsoever, make it do whatever he wanted to do for his good pleasure. And, uh, and as we continue to go on in Psalms 52, it says, you love evil more than good. Lying rather than speaking righteousness. David here addressed Doag's wicked heart and mind. The, the, the destruction of these razor sharp words were not an accident or out of character. Some people love evil and some people love to lie. You have some people that love to be wicked. Some people that love to do evil things. There's some people that love to lie. And Doag fulfilled both aspects. He loved the destruction his devouring words brought. I like what Solomon said, but that God is going to give, take everything into judgment. There is a reason to believe there was a gap in time between David visiting the tabernacle at Nob and Doag, reports to King Saul. It was not the case of the Edomite, merely blooding out what he knew at his first opportunity. On the contrary, he knew he had a piece of valuable information and kept it to himself until it would be best served in his interest to divulge it. David had done some wrong at the tabernacle of God at the city of Nob. David did lie to the priest Amalek. David did lie. He was not on the king's business because he was technically on the run. But as Christians and believers, regardless of how tough the test is, we ought to always tell the truth no matter how hard it hurts. Even though David lied to the priest of what his business was there, David also owned up and took a little bit of the blame for the incident that took place. David did own up to his aspects of the responsibility in a matter, and we can see that David owned up to it in 1 Samuel 22 and verse 22. Yet in this Psalms, he's wisely and properly did not blame himself for the massacre of the priest there. This was the work of a man who loved evil, there remain such men in the world. Even though Doag committed these crimes, there still are certain people alive in the world today and throughout history that committed such crimes like Hitler, Nebuchadnezzar, and even the president of Russia, we can see him doing all these crimes, invading a small country, Ukraine, because of the intents of the heart. And the verse 5 says, God shall likewise destroy you forever. He shall take you away and pluck you out of your dwelling place and uproot you from the land of the living, Salah. God likewise shall likewise destroy you forever. Because the goodness of God endures continually. For emphasis, for the sake of good poetry, David used four types of judgments that Doag will face because one is the wicked will be demolished. God is going to destroy them. The second one, the wicked will be snatched up like a coal from fire, take you away. The wicked will have their abode taken away, pluck you out out of your dwelling place. The wicked will be uprooted like a tree. He shall take you away. David prophesied the judgment of God against Doag. Not only would he be cast out of his house, your dwelling place, but also from the land of the living. 
Doag was destined for death. Anytime you touch God's anointing, you can expect God to recompense. Because what did he say in his word? He said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. I will get everyone back that does evil. Don't you take vengeance in your hand, but God will repay. In verses 8 and 9 it says this, but I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise you forever because you have done it. In the presence of your saints, I will wait on your name for it is good. I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I will trust in the mercy of God. David's running with Doag happened at the tabernacle, 1 Samuel 21, verses 1 through 7. Per perhaps there he saw a healthy green olive tree that was even more blessed because of where it was planted in the house of God. This blessedness came to David because he could honestly say, I trust in the mercy of God, and he will continue to do so forever and ever. One thing about the olive tree is the olive is one of the longest living trees. Here, the point is reinforced for he have pictures of the olive tree in full sap and one that grows in the sacred courtyard. He was in the house of God. They were in the world. He was as a fruitful olive tree. They was burned on profitable wood he was to be daily more and more strengthened established settled and increased you see as you stay in the house of God there is where you will gain your strength there is where you will learn to be settled there where your anointing and your knowledge of God will increase and there where you will be established in the kingdom of God let us stay in the house of God as David mentioned and as we can see through Psalms 52, the wickedness, the corruption of Doag with his words, with his action, with murder, we can learn that we could present our bodies a living sacrifice to God, staying humble, committed, so that God can use us for his purpose. And let us remember to keep our tongue bridled in control through God so that he could use it for his glory. And if you want to continue uh, the lessons, you can go over the scriptures that I mentioned early and do your own personal study and we'll be back with you on next Friday. Be blessed. Amen.